otherwise known by a couple of friends of mine, Captain Puerto Rico, because, I mean, one star, red and white stripes, that looks like the Puerto Rican flag. <laughs> Remember how many times you left out because you were broke? I feel this on a level that I shouldn't. And another Sherlock Holmes versus zombies, because everything is better with zombies. Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to Coffee Over Apples. My name's Steph, and I've got a very special video today because after doing a poll on Twitter, it was clear that everyone really wants to see a book tour. But the thing is, I've got a couple different kinds of shelves in my home. So I figured I'm gonna break my book tour up into three different sections. And the one that we're gonna talk about today is every graphic novel that I own. Change the world. So, I have three kinds of collections of books. I have regular books, novels, nonfiction, all that good stuff. The kind that we usually talk about on booktube. However, I also have a few shelves of manga, and then I also have stacks and stacks of graphic novels. So I figured I'm going to do three different book tours in 2020, book shelf tours. And the first one I'm going to talk about is all my graphic novels. So I'm going to show you guys the collection of graphic novels that I have. Some of them I bought on my own, some of them have been gifted to me over the years, some of them I got at flea markets, some of them you might know, some of them you might not know, so stick around if you want to find out any cool new titles. Some of them are fairly recent and some of them are way older than I am. So hope that you guys enjoy. If you would like to see the manga shelf tour next, or if you'd like to see the regular book tour next, please leave a comment down below letting me know. Also, if you haven't signed up for my giveaway yet, thank you so much to 300 plus subscribers. I have a giveaway going on until November 7th. So if you are watching this video before November 7th of 2020, please go to the video description down below and follow the instructions in that video in order to apply for my giveaway. I am giving away $20 USD worth of books from either your book depository, your Amazon, or your thrift books wish list. So, you might ask, Steph, why are you wearing gloves? Because these comics are very delicate and I don't want the grease from my fingers to mess up the paper and the ink because like I said, some of them are way older than I am. So I'm gonna be flipping through them with gloves. The table that I'm putting them on, I wipe down, it is clean and I have them in stacks. Some of them are in sleeves so I will have to take them out of the sleeves. But without further ado, here we go. All right, so here we go. Let's look at how many we have. Right, so all in all, we have all of these graphic novels to talk about. Some are American, some are Japanese. Um, the question that I'm not sure of is whether these single shots count as manga. I would guess they are manga, so I'm gonna call this graphic novel slash manga tour. However, reading these um, single chapter manga like this, I think usually falls into the spectrum of graphic novels, I want to say. But let's begin. So I guess the way that this is going to work is that I'll show you the graphic novels and then we'll talk about what's inside, when it was made, and how many issues I have. So here I have some really old Pokemon. Oh my goodness, look how old these are. This is issue one, two, three of the Pikachu series, the electric tail of Pikachu, I guess. Um, and then actually these two are from the Pikachu series. These two are from a spinoff called Pikachu Shocks Back. So, I mean, I haven't read these in, it's gotta be like 20 years. It's been so long. Um, these are from Viz Comics. And, oh look, there's even a Dragon Ball Z advertisement on the back that tells you how long it's been. I wanna say these were printed in, my camera, 
Focus. 1995. Wow, these are really old. 1995, 1996, and 1998 Nintendo. Next one, very cool. We've got some Halo. So, I really enjoyed Halo. I've played two, three, and four. I want to say three is probably my favorite one. Four I beat in like three days, but we love Halo. Master Chief is everything. Um, this is issue four of five. I don't think I have the other five. Man, this would be really cool to reread. But Halo Bloodline, yeah. Another personal favorite, and I love this one. Don't plan on getting rid of it anytime soon. Alien vs. Predator. Oh yeah. Versus the Terminator, all three. How cool is that? This is issue number one of four by Dark Horse Comics. I don't have the other three. Really wish I did. Got an ad on the back for Star Wars Episode One. Holy cow. Look at this art. It's so cool. This next one is one of my favorites, and if you know me, this is not a surprise. But I've got issues one, two, and three of the Dark Tower graphic novels, and these are beautiful. I absolutely love these. If you know me, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Dark Tower. I didn't even know that Marvel put these out, and it's beautiful. Look at the art on the inside. The illustrations are awesome. So I believe these are all covering, so far, these uh, three issues are covering the first, the first book in the Dark Tower series, which is The Gunslinger. Um, but they, I know that they did continue making these, and I'm pretty sure that they're, if they're not done yet, they're most of the way through the Dark Tower series, which I really want to get into reading the rest of these. I want to collect them. They're just so hard to find. Next we have Thor, the Mighty Thor. This is an issue from March of 69, I want to say. Am I from reading that right? Bam. Wow, these were 35 cents back then. Some of these I haven't seen in so long. You can kind of tell the waxiness of the paper. Um, oh no, I'm wrong. This is 1977. I don't know if you guys, you can see right there in the, on the little lining, it says 1977. Wow, this is really old. Let's see if we have any ads in here for 1977. Make money, get prizes. Fast selling American seeds. <laughs> so kids could go around selling seeds from back then, like planting seeds. Oh man. Strong arms. Clark coconut. Clark bars? Does anyone even buy Clark bars? Was Clark turned into another company? I'm not even sure. Marvel Treasure Star Wars. Six dollars including postage. Holy cow. And advertisement for Slim Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how many times you left out because you were broke? I feel this on a level that I shouldn't. Now, another one of my favorites, Resident Evil. Gotta love the video games. Creep me out as a kid. I remember as a teenager playing part four, I think was the best one. Oh man, you know what I'm talking about? The thing that goes, <laughs> freaks me out every single time. Is this Claire? This might be Claire. Does that make that Chris? I don't remember. Next, we have Marvel Tales featuring Spider-Man and Cannonball. This issue is from 1990. This is a 50th anniversary of Captain America. So this was 1991, I guess. Punisher advertisement on the back. Next we have New Universe. I never read this one. Beware the Wampus? 4th of February. What year is this? Gumdinger Adventures. Gumby and Pokey. Oh, it's Gumby! I loved Gumby growing up. He was one of my favorite shows as a kid. 
case you don't know what Gumby is, it was like this little gummy guy. He's made out of clay, kind of like uh, Wallace and Gromit or Shaun the Sheep now. And I have a Web of Spider-Man Giant Size 30th Anniversary Special. This is a 1992 edition, so this is a 30 year anniversary of Spider-Man and it's also holographic. You guys can see, I've got this holographic Spider-Man on it. It's pretty dope. Some of these I might take out of the package as we're going along. This is from the Spider-Man Saga. This is a 1991 issue. And you can see we got Punisher on here, we've got Ghost Rider, a couple different things, Captain America, Thor back there. I don't know if this is the beginning of the Avengers story. I'm not sure, I'm not a huge Marvel fan. Occasionally I do read some, obviously you can see but they're just random bits here and there. So this side, I guess we've got some Avengers and this side we've got all the villains. So when you open it, I guess it kind of looks like that. That's pretty cool. Got a full spread. Um, this issue is not really a comic. I guess it's more of giving us, um, is it more of a novel? Yeah, it's giving us more story and paragraphs versus panels, so. Next we have Sherlock Holmes, Victorian Undead. Sherlock Holmes versus zombies, I mean, what more do you want? I guess if you like Sherlock Holmes, here's your zombie action. And another Sherlock Holmes versus zombies. I guess this is issue number five. Because everything is better with zombies. Okay, this is Spider Woman. So growing up as a young woman, I was really into finding female superheroes to identify with. So you're gonna see a lot in here. But this was Spider-Woman, and I believe this was Spider-Man's daughter, if I'm not mistaken. But this is more recent than the rest of them. I wanna say this might be like a 2000 and, 2000 or 2001. Punisher, oh man, I really love the Punisher growing up. Got a couple issues in this pack. Um, these are August 2nd, August 3rd, July 4th. <laughs> Look at that, 48 pages, no ads, wow! <laughs> this is 1992, 1993. Wow, the full page, the color in here. Is gorgeous. I gotta go back and reread some of these. These are pretty dope. I mean, who doesn't like Frank Castle? He's gone through the ringer, poor guy. Another Punisher. This is another summer special. Look, no ads. Another Spider Girl, this time bringing back the Goblin. Um, and then a Spider Man Venom. I, I love. Venom. I love a good anti-hero. Now this is obviously much later than that. Spider-Girl came way after Spider-Man. This is a 1991 comic and I want to say I got this in like, might have been like 2000 or 2000, 2001. Really cool stuff. I kind of want to read this. I'm loving this. Okay, now we're getting into some obscure comics, even though we'll be back to the popular stuff in a second. We've got Cinderella. This looks like, this is of 2010 by Vertigo Comics. I have a couple stories from Vertigo Comics. I guess this is like a Cinderella retelling. Oh look, we've got an Xbox 360 ad on the back. It tells you what was going on back then. Um, and this is the unwritten Willow Bank Tales. Is this like Alice in Wonderland? I don't remember. I don't think I've read this one. Wolverine. Everybody loves a good Wolverine story. This is a one shot volume one. X Factor. Was never really into this.
The Marvel Project. Yeah, not a huge fan of Captain America. I mean, otherwise known by a couple of friends of mine, Captain Puerto Rico, because, I mean, one star, red and white stripes. That looks like the Puerto Rican flag. Don't even try telling me otherwise. But you go ahead, Captain America. More Spider-Man. This it looks a bit older. This might be... Oh, 1984. Okay. This might be 1984. Let's take a look. Not for Sunday drivers. Oh, man. Yeah, 1984. There we go. Yeah, I grew up playing with Matchbox cars when I was a kid. Like, Hot Wheels were my thing. I didn't want Barbie dolls. Even though I had them, I wanted Hot Wheels. Another Wolverine, Origin of X-Men. I prefer Wolverine if I'm gonna talk about any Marvel character. I guess it'd be Wolverine. But then Venom also. This might have been one of those issues that came with, like, a Burger King meal or, like, a Happy Meal or something back in the day because this is the Not For Sale. Yeah, this free comic book day. Oh, no. Maybe this... I. This was the one that was given away by the comic shops back then. Some more Marvel. We've got Guardians of the Galaxy. This one is a 1977 issue, and then this is a 1980 issue of Spider-Man. Look at this ad for Toys R Us. They're not even around anymore. I heard something about Toys R Us kind of reopening soon. I guess they went bankrupt. Now they're rebranding themselves. Um, man, that's wild. More advertisements for kids to sell stuff. Great job, Marvel. Really capitalizing on that child labor. The next one, this might be slightly controversial. This came out right after 9-11. This is the Call of Duty and it follows, it's got a couple different issues. This one is focused on firefighters. I think there's another one um, with police officers and you can see right there the uh, little logo with the Twin Towers. Um, I remember reading this and thinking like, oh, this is a really interesting perspective. And yes, these people were heroes, but I don't think that these issues exactly follow individuals who are involved with 9-11. I think it's just kind of used to like glorify these professions in their own light. Um, so depending on how you feel about that, I, uh, I'm not sure how about I'm not sure how I feel about that um, especially with all of the issues around like police brutality right now mm, yeah I mean I know there's good cops and there's bad cops but yeah but I mean this was like wait this was 20 years ago so it was a different time then okay this next one's kind of falling apart and this is a Wonder Woman um, but man, this cover fell off. I guess it must have gotten damaged to like a move or something. That really sucks. I was a huge Wonder Woman fan growing up. I love this cover art. Sonic the Hedgehog. I am not a huge fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. This is one of those things that like me and my friends used to read growing up, but yeah, Sonic was alright. More X-Men Unlimited. Excalibur. Um, I don't really remember too much from this. It's been so many years since I've read this. Um, this is what is what year is this? Might of the Phoenix. Mage Stones game. Oh man, this is is this an old PC game? This is 1990. What if the beast and the thing continued to mutate? These are some like special edition mashups that I've got over here. 1982. Plus, what if the Silver Surfer lost the Power Cosmic? Oh man, chill out. And we got Legos. Some more Spider-Man. And some more Spider-Man. Wow, I didn't realize that I collected so much Spider-Man. I think I'm pretty sure some of these were gifted to me. We've got 1988, 1991, and another 1991. 
this one being a Spider-Man and Fantastic Four crossover because it's Spider-Man and Invisible Girl. This one is pretty cool. This is Ninjak. I don't remember anything. Wow, it's as if I never read these before because I just don't remember anything from them. But look at this cover. It's wild, reflective. That is so cool. And if you can tell, it's almost chromatic. Ninjak was a samurai. And I've got issues one, two. Oh, it's beautiful. One, two, three, four, and five. This one's guest starring Exo Man of War. Oh, wow. That went right over my head as a kid. Look at this cover art, though. I'm loving this. And ads on the back are for. Terminator 2! No way! That is so cool! For Super Nintendo, holy cannoli. This one wraps all the way around. So it's got this like double spread for the cover. Okay, we've got some more manga here with Dragon Knights. Um, this was back when Tokyo Pop used to do manga. Tokyo Pop isn't even really around anymore. I think I think they went out of business, but this is the first volume of when they did one shots. Justice League Task Force. June of 93. Alright, so this next one I've got quite a few of, but this is Namor. Is it Namor or Namor? I don't know. My comic buddies are probably going to kill me. However, I've got issues one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I really like the cover of seven. Check that out. It's got this almost metallic look to it. And then this is in deep part two and three and four. Um, and then I've got Namor 11, so it's kind of like I'm missing some. I guess I'm missing the first two of this second one, but yeah, I haven't read this yet. It's been sitting in my collection for quite some time. I should probably pick this up. If anyone's read this, let me know. Some more Wonder Woman. And this, this is the first issue in the Secret Files Origins. And this is March of 1998. Some comics and stories, some just random, random comics from Dark Horse. Supergirl. Now, I've never watched the TV show, so don't come at me for that, but I used to be a huge fan of Supergirl. Some more anime. This is Corrector Yui. I was a big fan of this series. It's really an obscure manga series, but this is also from Tokyo Pop. The next one is a worldwide favorite, and that is Card Captor Sakura. Um, this is issue number 31. I have a couple random of these one shots from Tokyo Pop, but I have more of the um, regular volumes or the regular kind of manga that you would buy in my manga shelf. So I'll show that to you in my manga shelf tour. Also, some also some very popular Inuyasha. I love Inuyasha. Inuyasha is one of my favorites. It's a classic. This is 8, this is 12, and 8, this is 7, and 6. I'm pretty sure I've got the other ones around here somewhere. But Inuyasha's great if you haven't watched it. There's a girl, she goes down a well, she goes back in time. There's a guy, he's stuck to a tree, he's a jerk, but she likes him, and then all this stuff happens. Demons, all that good stuff. Some more Dragonites. Vampire Yui, this is also a really old, obscure anime. Iron Cat Comics, I mean, the logo for Iron Cat Comics. Talk about BDSM. But this is from 1997. This is not a popular series by any means, but it was pretty good. I mean, by what my teenage brain thought was good, so I'll have to rewatch that. 
some more Card Capture Sakura. This is issue number five. More Vampire Yui, issue number five, 1998. These next few are a worldwide favorite. I've got numbers 11, 15, 16, 17, 18, 31, 35, and 32 out of order of the Sailor Moon one-shot mangas from Chicks Comics. That's how you know this is old because I'm pretty sure that... <laughs> Sorry for the camera shift, guys. My camera fell. I'm pretty sure that Chicks Comics turned into... Tokyo Pop, I want to say, or got merged with Tokyo Pop a really long time ago. They're not even around anymore. This is like a 20 year old company, but these mangas were my favorite growing up. I absolutely adore Sailor Moon. Yeah, so you can see the Tokyo Pop on the bottom, so I'm pretty sure that these two merged. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Another Vampire Mew. Some more Inuyasha. Volume 6 and Volume 5. Some more obscure comics. The Fly and GI Combat. I don't even remember what these are about. More Sonic. And The Web. I don't think I ever read this one. Powerpuff Girls. Everybody loves Powerpuff Girls. Buttercup was my favorite. Assassin's Creed Fall Exclusive from DC. I think this might have been when the games were coming out. Which game is this from? You can tell that this is ripped up and then my cat tried to eat this. Printed and packaged in Canada. More Vampire Mew, Volume 1 of Part 2. Another favorite of mine, Battlestar Galactica. I love Battlestar Galactica. So cool. I'm such a sci-fi nerd. Batman versus Batman. Dun dun dun. This is, ooh, it was 75 cents back in December of 86. Some Wonder Woman, Our World at War, Blood and Glory. This is from 2001. Masters of the Universe. You need some He-Man in your life. Star Trek. Issue number one from spring of 94. NBA Jam. <laughs> For Nintendo Soul. Day Tripper, another one shot, I guess. Or is this issue number four? I'm not sure. From Vertigo Comics. Okay, you guys, that is it for this bookshelf tour. Thank you so much for watching. And also, if you are interested in entering in the giveaway, don't forget to follow the instructions in the link below. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. I'll see you next time. Bye.